Lord, it is good for us to be here. Words taken from our Holy Gospel today. Today, we contemplate detachment, how our penances detach us from sensible pleasures, how they also ought to cool both our concupiscible and irascible appetites, and how they help us look towards heaven. St. Peter says, Lord, it is good for us to be here. But where is he talking about? Does he mean the world? Does he mean Mount Tabor, the mountain, as if it were a better mountain than any other? He means it is good for us to be with you, with Christ shining with heavenly brightness, conversing with the saints of old. What is this but a foretaste of heaven? Peter wishes to stay here forever, just like the saints in heaven. But Mount Tabor is not heaven, simply a foretaste of it, a small spark of it, given for our encouragement and motivation. It is very good to desire heaven. One cannot get to heaven if he does not desire it, for if he does not desire it, he will never want more than earthly happiness. Content with worldly things, he will be attached to the world. Detachment from the world is necessary, then, even to desire heaven, and certainly to go there. Lent is a great time for detachment. Our penances, when we take them seriously, cut us off from those worldly comforts and amusements we are so used to. This is one of the best reasons to go big for Lent, to be hard on yourself during Lent. The more you give up, the less pleasure you take in this life. You sit down to eat, but only nourish your body and have little pleasure in the food. You come home and read a spiritual book instead of watching a TV show. You used to take pleasure and amusement in going through Facebook and reading the news, knowing what's going on in other people's lives. But now you sit in church and pray to God. Even those little things you take for granted, relaxing showers, comfortable bed, snacking whenever you feel like it, gone too are these. You drive to the store in silence. Music is gone. People take little notice of you. Your fancy clothes and makeup all packed away. The more avenues of earthly comfort and pleasure that you cut off during Lent, the more detached one hopes you will become. Indeed, it is certainly possible to white-knuckle it, to grin and bear it, and in a lot of cases, that is definitely needed at first. We may find ourselves very much looking forward to Sunday or Easter for relief. It is indeed possible to be more externally detached from things while still holding on to some internal attachment. Just like a poor man may still lust after riches. But particularly, if we add spiritual reading and more prayer to our Lent, these penances can affect our spirit as well. More and more, we can forget about drinking or whatever. Perhaps we noticed it in the first week, but now it's out of our routine, gone from our mind. Removing something from our external life is the first step to removing it from our inner life. And so we do our penances to chastise ourselves, to unite ourselves to Christ, and along with that, as a means or as a consequence, to be more detached from things of this life. For the more you detached you are from this world, the more you can look forward to true joy in heaven. Our penances help us to see this world as unpleasant in comparison with heaven. 
It is good to live uncomfortable in this world as a stranger, to learn that our true comfort and true home is only in heaven. This is to make Lent a bit like religious life. For just so do religious live, eating simple food, reading only spiritual books, conversing with God rather than the internet, no TV or movies. At most, the conversation of their fellow religious for their recreation. Yes, you will say, not all are called to religious life. Most are not. And for those, these things, nice food, warm showers, decent entertainments, indeed, these are not sinful. Otherwise, one would have to be a religious to go to heaven, which the church has never taught. True, but still. To take Lent as this time, to live more like a religious, will help you have some of the detachment from this world that they do, to yearn for heaven as they do. Now thus far, we have only considered how we wean ourselves from those things we like about this world, those things we take pleasure in, so as to learn to love heaven the more. But we also ought to take less displeasure in those things in this world that we dislike, injuries, illnesses, and of course, other people. We do well to remember the words of St. Francis de Sales. One man sets great value on fasting and believes himself to be leading a very devout life, so long as he fasts rigorously, although his heart is full of bitterness and while he will not moisten his lips with wine, perhaps not even with water, in his great abstinence, he does not scruple to steep them in his neighbor's blood through slander and detraction. Another man reckons himself as devout because he repeats many prayers daily, although at the same time he does not refrain from all manner of angry, irritating, conceited, or insulting speeches among his family and neighbors. Thus far, St. Francis. This much also, St. Paul says in our epistle today, in a condensed fashion, when he says that one's sanctification is to engage in neither the passion of lust, the concupiscible appetite, nor in transgressing and overreaching one's brother, the irascible appetite. As we mortify our concupiscible appetite, then, as we take less and less pleasure in worldly enjoyments, let us mortify our irascible appetite as well, and take less and less displeasure in evils found in nature or in our neighbor. For just as our worldly pleasures are passing away and threaten to distract us from our true home in heaven, so too are our worldly displeasures. The man who persecutes us without cause will not always be there. The injury or illness will only last as long as this life. All these evils are passing away, here today, gone tomorrow, or the next day, but always passing. Only heaven and hell are forever. Lent is a great time to mortify our irascible appetite alongside our concupiscible one. You may find that by mortifying your likes, your enjoyments, you are tempted to pursue a certain spiritual compensation by indulging in your dislikes. A bit more tired and certainly less entertained, you may find yourself having to work harder to be charitable and looking for some relief. For if you do not indulge your concupiscence, you may be tempted to indulge your irritability and anger. 
fight this urge as well. Consider it part and parcel of your Lenten penances. You gave up sweets? Do not complain when someone gets your order wrong. You do not indulge your mind with amusing entertainments. Neither entertain yourself with your neighbor's faults. You give up watching TV. Give up also watching your neighbor, your neighbor avidly for any mistake, replaying old injuries again and again in your mind, like your favorite TV episode. Indeed, attachments even to our dislikes are strings that bind us, that bind us to this world, that turn our gaze to created things, that distract us from heaven. Rather, turn your mind towards heaven, where there is no enmity, where you will be reconciled and at peace with even your worst enemy, just as St. Stephen enjoys the blessed company and friendship of St. Paul, who conspired in his murder. Finally, we must be patient with ourselves in all these endeavors. Why? The same reason. We are worldly, fleshy, fallen creatures. St. Francis de Sales reminds us that our imperfections will accompany us to the grave. So, too, we can be attached to our daily struggles with ourselves. I do not mean that we are not to strive for perfection, but that we may, must not be attached to achieving perfection in this life, for we never will. So we must give up the idea that we are either already perfect now, or that we shall never succeed in anything because of all our failures. We must not care overmuch, even for ourselves in this life. We must see ourselves more and more as dust, holding in our mind those words traced on our forehead on Ash Wednesday. Remember, man, that thou art dust, and unto dust thou shalt return. Instead, of longing for things in this life, of being attached to things of this world, things we like, things we dislike, let us long for heaven, for the only place we will truly find rest, the only place we will truly find peace, the only place we will ever be perfect and sinless, where we shall dwell in the company of Jesus Christ and the saints, close to our blessed Mother Mary, who is ever with us in this life, ever consoling us, ever guiding us, ever reminding us of the day when we shall meet her and her Son, when we shall say in perfect truth, Lord, it is good for us to be here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.